Hey everybody, it's Mike over here from Growtopia, and I figured the best way to do this video after multiple tries of it and dealing with the phone overheating is to go outside. It's actually finally cooled down, it's about 7 o'clock at night in Zone 7A, and right here where we got is our growing Bible. Now our growing Bible that we are using is actually a lot of stuff from James Pigioni. And a lot of stuff that's mixed into it is a lot of stuff that I've learned. And I'm going to go through everything inside of it. I'm going to try to show you as much as I can. And if I was to film the majority of the stuff that's in here, it's going to take three hours. So we're going to try to run through the first couple months of what you should be planting. And the reason why I wanted to do this is actually we're next to one of my large cherry tomatoes. And what I'm going to show you guys here is the bottom leaves of this tomato. I can show you that right here. Okay, good. So I'm going to shift my body over. And we're going to actually be working through this section here. So a lot of the leaves that are down here. So if you see this down here. Okay, this is a weed. We want to pull, try to pull this weed out from under it. Now, because, here it is, the rest of this is the rest of that weed. I want to get rid of that. Keep the mulch around it. We are also in a flight path as well. And one of the things I'm going to grab right now while I have you guys with me is a piece of my basil. So here's my basil plant right here. Now here's a nice big leaf off of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab it, I'm going to snip it right off with my hand, and I eat it. Mm. Nice, fresh, fresh Italian basil. And eventually, what will start happening behind me as time goes on is the lightning bugs that come out. And obviously these guys are all looking very good. So what is inside the Bible? The Bible is what everybody should be having. The, doesn't matter if it's this book, if it's another book, anything that you're using, a spiral notebook, a marble notebook, or something like this you bought off Amazon. Now, I bought this off Amazon. It's very expensive for a lot of people. I love it. <clears throat> I love it for the look of it. I love the leather of it. I love how the pages are not paper. They're actually cloth. So it makes a lot of a difference when you're actually writing on it. Now inside of this Bible, I write down a lot of things. On the left hand side, mosquito go away. I have the temperature for a mat. I have a heating mat that I run stuff on. I have plant, I have month, and then I have the description, not here. I'll show you guys that right now. So, inside of here, for like an example, for a plant, we got jalapenos. I love jalapenos. I love spicy stuff. And here, for the month, for planting it in a pod, the little pods that I talk about. So, for an example, I have borage over here, and the borage is slowly kind of coming to play. It's really not doing much. We're going to dig it up a little bit. You can see a little bit of the leaf growing up here. These are the pods that I'm talking about. It's a biodegradable material that has uh, peat moss inside of it with a mix of soil. And what I do is before I stick them in the ground, I pull out the bottom of the bag so that the top section can grow. And because it's taken a little while, I can do that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have taken it out of the ground. But that was just to show you guys, and that is actually borage. Borage is great to plant with your tomatoes along with basil. You can put onions in here as well. I got radishes over here. I got beets on this side. It's awesome. I'm living in a growtopia and it's about to get even bigger. So with jalapenos for mid-January, they are sensitive to cold temperature. Transplant when nighttime soil is above 60 degrees. They like moist soil and when they're growing, inside the nursery in those pods they actually like 16 hours of grow light so that means that for 16 hours of that one plant it 
needs to grow legs for. Germination is 21 days. After that, no growth, reseed, and repeat the steps. So meaning that basically, if you get to a point after 21 days and your jalapeno plants, jalapeno, habanero, um, will be the only ones that be really grown. I, I love scotch bonnet as well that come from Jamaica. The problem is, is that we can't grow them out here because we don't have the temperatures out here in 7A in New York. And where I'm sitting on Long Island, I'm basically dead center, dead center of the island, so I got water on both sides, obviously. But we kind of get like heat and humidity more, so I got to really play around with what I can and can't grow. I would love to grow Scotch bonnets, but that's only a Jamaica plant. And um, if I want an actual real Scotch bonnet, I got to get them imported. Uh, we're going to jump down to bell peppers. Bell peppers, they like February. You want to transplant them in mid-May. All kinds, they're slow growers. Their germination time is 7 to 10 days. You want to transplant them mid-May to June. That's when the soil temperature is above 70 degrees. On the heating mat, they like 80 to 90 degrees. Eggplants are also in February. They're slow growers. They like 70 to 80 degrees. We're going to jump down the fiber. In the next one we got uh, celery that's also in February they like grow lights all day they like moist soil they like 70 75 degrees so you gotta make sure your heat mats you actually put them at the temperature that you actually need them at and because they like the moist soil you gotta remember sometimes you gotta keep the cover on you gotta take the cover off as well we're gonna jump down to our onions and chives in February you want to plant them very shallow so shallow planting basically means as if that if this is the soil Okay, I'm gonna pat down the wood chips. You want to actually move the wood chips just a little bit to the side and plant your seeds and push it back on top, and they will grow. <clears throat> they like 60 to 75 degrees. Strawberries in February, the seeds take one year to full growth. So if you want strawberries this season, you're not gonna get them. You want them next season, you're uh, actually better off. You want them two seasons from now, you're even better off. So you got to remember certain things like strawberries, they take a long time to actually get to the point of maturity. You can actually harvest from them. And that is really a horrible situation. I'm actually looking at one of my raspberry bushes to see if it actually has it. And actually I do have a raspberry bush over there that actually does have a raspberry on it. And I got a bee that's floating around on me. Um, for parsley, parsley is a very interesting one. Uh, I learned this one from him because my parsley wasn't taken off. Uh, you want to soak your seeds in water for 24 hours and they take about two to th six weeks to germinate. They like 50 to 70 degrees. So a lot of times when you start writing this Bible out, if you do it the way that I'm doing with the mat temperature, if you're in, you, not if you should, but you should be running an actual mat if you want to really get into this, you're gonna make sure that you put all the plants that you need that can sit on those mats at those certain times. I'm gonna to flip to another page. The next page that we got over here is we're still in February and we're talking about kale. Kale likes 60 to 75 degree temperature. So if you look at the temperatures that are on the last ones and you throw your kale into that, kale likes those temperatures, but kale also is really good to plant under your bigger plants or your bigger trees. So if I had a bunch of kale ready to go and the tomatoes were bigger, I would start putting the kale around them. Tomatoes. Now that we're in the tomato section, tomatoes are extremely crazy when it comes down to the heat mats. You want to make sure that your actual tomato tray, because my tomato trays are fives by threes, so that's 15 pods. So if I do 15 pods of random tomatoes, I got to make sure that that whole tomato tray is actually sitting on the full mat. And my mats are the size of the tomato trays. So a lot of times that my mat will be this way, let's say my mat's this way, and my tomatoes are like this. Or not my tomatoes, but my tray is like this. So only a small amount of my tray is actually touching the heating pad. So for the tomatoes, I gotta make sure that that, that one tray of 15 pods is sitting on top of my heating mat. And they like 75 to 90 degrees, so it's a nice wide range. So I can set it at like 85, 86, and this is, you know, we're looking at March at this point. We're looking at March at this point. So it's still going to be cold. Um, six to eight days to germinate. Cover lightly. 
take cover off every two days, move to greenhouse. Now that's something I put in. Once they touch the lid, once soil temp is warm, plant in mid-May. So the, the, so the lid situation is where these guys come into play. So inside the pots, inside the pot trays, there's a cover on top that's got two vents. If you guys watch my other videos, you'll, you'll know that as well. And I'll obviously reshoot that. I'll keep honestly, honestly keep shooting that again. Once the leaves, they start hitting the top of it, I throw them in my greenhouse. I throw them in my greenhouse because in New York, our weather is very bipolar. It could be warm, it could be cold. Right now, it's like in the late 70s and I can film. Before, a couple hours ago, it was too hot out to film. So with that being said, I'm able to do what I need to do right now to try to get you guys you know, on tap with different stuff. I got mosquitoes and stuff fucking chasing me around. I got like five more bites right now, that's all right. Um, when it comes to the tomatoes, when they touch the top of that lid, is when I take them and I stick them in my greenhouse. Then I plant another batch of tomatoes. Now, if the seed pods that are in there didn't take off at day, what, we're looking at day eight, some day day nine, usually I try to plant stuff, let's say, on a Friday afternoon. So if next Friday afternoon there's really nothing going on, I'll let it float for a little longer until, this, until the leaves touch the lid. And the lid is about that far off the plant. So once the leaves touch the lid, I move them into the greenhouse. Then I start another batch of tomatoes. I know it gets crazy and complicated, but that's what I did to get everything that's growing in this 24-foot section. And it's been... Come here, mosquito. It's been... Get out of here. It's been crazy, but it's worth it because everything is growing. Land on me. I swear to you. Once you get that little niche going down, then you realize. Now, my nursery starts off in my house, then it goes to a greenhouse, and then it goes outside. After the frost has been done and the temperatures are over 75 degrees, the greenhouse becomes almost obsolete, except for like certain items that need to be in partial shade or more shade, or even something that we're dealing with that has a tendency to deal with like mosquitoes. Now, one of the things actually I really want to show you guys really quickly because I just noticed it right now. Not only does this tomato plant actually grow next to the corn, which as you can see the corn is right there, but we have a flower right there. So, there are times that certain things that are you're being told may or may not work out for you. So, the best thing to do is, is kill the mosquitoes when you can. I try to put garlic in my diet, but apparently it's not really working well. But you want to trim the bottom of your tomatoes as they grow. But that's a whole different video. I know I'm, I'm giving you guys a lot of like, random times. We're going to go back to the Bible. Uh, once soil temperature is warm, mid-May, soil must be below the leaves for proper planting. Stop flower before transplant. So, this one has a flower on it. And this is a large cherry tomato. And because it's July, I kind of want to let them float because this year is a lot of experimenting. So I'm going to start, once I get all the way down to December written down in here, I'm going to start actually writing stuff down and experimenting with it and try to bring it down to everybody that's in 7A in Long Island, New York. Um, because it's hard to pinpoint when you're in 7A. You got a guy from Jersey, you got a guy that's from New York. I'm dead center of the island of, of Long Island, New York. Everybody has a different thing. So, for the past few days, we had 90 degree temperatures. This area is run by sprinklers. And a lot of things people say, even James says, you don't want the leaves to get wet because they can actually grow bacteria on them. We water in the early morning. I'm talking about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And these leaves have no bacteria on them. And they run off the sprinklers. By the time that the sun comes up, the water is already off the leaves and they're growing fine. They're healthy, they're clean. I don't have to use anything. They smell great. Um, some of them, even this one, this large cherry actually kind of smells like celery. Uh, tomatoes are extremely 
probably my biggest thing that I'm really focused on, which I really shouldn't be because I love my jalapenos and I love my radishes, I love my beets, I love my potatoes, um, I love my cucumbers, I love my basil. It, it's just kind of like one of my biggest things this year that I'm really focused on. Borage is the next one. Borage is what we actually pulled out of the ground. So borage is actually a plant with blue flowers on it that you want to plant with your... Um, Cause I got three of them. We got borage, we got marigolds, and we got basil. The three plants, I call them the bodyguard plants. The reason why I call them the bodyguard plants is because basil, borage, and marigolds will help keep everything off of your tomato plants. And they will also help everything else. And they're also a March plant you want to start. What I like to do, actually what I'm going to start doing, not what I like to do, but what I like to do next year is start my borage, my marigolds, and my basil two weeks before I start my tomatoes and the reason why is because in case the basil or the marigolds or the borage doesn't take off for some weird reason after that two week period I'm going to give them like a few days of what it takes for them to germinate and then if they don't see anything I'm going to plant more, I'm going to plant more, I'm going to plant more, I'm going to plant more because basically you really need them the basil is great for that. The borage is great for that. The marigolds are even better for that. I got two marigolds plants out of probably like 18 or 20 that I planted, which is scary. So that means that the seed packet is probably subpar or I wasn't planting them at the right height. So that could have been more on my end versus their end, but who knows. Borage is mid-March. In a seed pod, you're looking at 60 to 70 degrees used to protect tomato plants. I have it written down, one borage plant for every one tomato plant. Plant shallow, needs grow light to germinate. See, I didn't know that. Seven to 14 days to sprout, can eat the leaves. Now I got a borage in front of me, I'm not gonna eat the leaves because I need it to get a little bit bigger, but that was the one I showed you. Next one is marigolds, also the bodyguard flower. Used to protect tomatoes and other plants. Plant one plant per three tomatoes. Plant shallow, needs grow light to germinate, five to seven days to sprout. You're already seeing that they need the grow lights. So the problem was is that when I originally was planting them, they sat in a pod with no grow lights. And they weren't being planted shallow, they were being planted like half an inch to maybe an, almost an inch down. So that was the problem right there. The last one is basil. Used to protect tomato plants. Plant two basil plants Per one tomato, one to five days to two weeks to germinate. Needs light to germinate. Plant shallow. Those three plants need light and they got to be planted shallow. Yet again, everybody, shallow. And like I said, you could watch James Pigioni talk about this. It's literally you're flicking the top of the soil. You're putting the seed down and you're flicking it back over. <clears throat> that is what shallow is. And I was planting everybody so freaking deeper than they needed to be. And it's amazing the basil that I do have growing did survive because they were out of like probably a hundred of them. So those seed pods, instead of throwing them out, I just put other stuff in them and I started growing them again. So what happens with when I start reusing my seed pods that didn't do anything is I start having plants that start having other stuff growing in the background. I see weeds, I like to pull them out when I'm talking. This is just page two. <clears throat> now, we're at 18 minutes. And like I said, if I was to go through the rest of this, we're looking at probably almost two to three hours. So, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of that. And honestly, if you wanna know more, definitely comment below. I will go through it and make a full video and I will talk about everything under the sun. Otherwise, go check out James Pigiloni from the gardening channel. He talks about every month from February all the way down, down to December and put in your own information that you know that works for you, such as sticking my tomato plants in my greenhouse before I bring them outside. Um, I put them in there literally until the next batch hits the top of the ceiling. Once that ceiling hits, I take those tomato plants and I will stick them outside in my orange planters. Uh, that was because I didn't have this yet. So when I transplanted these guys, they didn't give a shit because it was night and day for them. You know, I mean, not night and day. It was, it was literally just moving from one side of the yard to the other. Other ones, they literally just drooped all the way down. 
but then they sprung back up. So I was in the right window for that, but from now on, I'm gonna do exactly that is once their leaves hit the top of it, I know he says the two tree, the two three, the two true, or the three true leaves is when you wanna transplant stuff. It depends on the temperature. The greenhouse really comes good into play for when you're trying to transplant stuff and you're kind of like in that limbo, but you got to move stuff out of the pods because they're growing out of it. You could let them grow longer, but you also want to constantly keep that growing going. And um, that's what I did for this whole 24-foot section. And it's a lot of tomato plants of different varieties, and there's a lot of varieties I didn't plant, and there's a lot of varieties I don't even have. That I still actually want to get even like the super 100s that he talks about I want to get those as well such as that one and also like the hillbilly one as well so anyway guys I hope you guys got a little something out of this a little information maybe a little insight like subscribe share it with your friends and family and uh, get out there and grow I mean shit man we got we got a flower another one about to grow another one about to pop and like I said, I'm going to do a lot of research to figure out the indeterminate and the determinate of the tomatoes on how to trim them, which ones you trim, which ones are indeterminate, which ones aren't. Um, the determinate ones I was seeing, if I'm not mistaken, and don't please don't quote me on it, research it yourself, I was seeing plum and romana tomatoes as a determinant uh, from the research I was doing. But like I said, it looks like a lot of the, the trimming up in here and there, but also a lot of times... I look at stuff like as in nature, no one's going to be there trimming it. So what if I just let it do what it's do its thing? I may not get a lot of tomatoes from it, but if I'm growing a lot of tomato plants and I don't get a lot of tomatoes from one plant for only two people, it's not, you know, you also got to look at like how many people you're gro like you're growing for, right? So I got two people in the house. So it's me and my mother. So if we only get from one plant like two tomatoes that's fine we got 20 tomato plants so that's 40 tomatoes right there from different tomato plants and then we take the seeds from those tomatoes and then we save them and then we put them into packets so we can grow them again and eventually you're going to get to a point where you're not going to have to be buying the tomato seeds uh, you're going to be basically just growing your own stuff over and over and over again and you start saving your seeds and then you just start growing your own stuff and it's great and then you when you know it you keep that bible and you you, you know you want to log in like once i get it all the way down to december i'm going to start putting logs in there you know where it basically says like the plant uh the time i planted it as a pot or, or keep track of like basically everything that is like involved with it so basically I'm, what I'm saying is like so if I take plant A and I plant it at June and then I keep track of how long does it take for it to germinate that will go into the log so that the next time around I know okay so if I plant it on June 3rd week at this time the temperature outside in my seed pot at this temperature and it took x amount of days and then i left it i left it i left it there might be a point in time where when it comes down to your actual trays inside your house and it's too cold outside to put them in a greenhouse where they're starting to get like this high just let them go just make sure you follow that same type of you know process where they need either light or water they need fertilizer i mean my homegrown fertilizer i do is the the banana peels and orange peels everything loves it everything's grown off of it everything also that was planted in here has all went off of the eggshell powder which is literally eggshells that are dried out there I wash them I let them dry out in the oven at 350 until they get dry they get a little brown inside of them and then I, I put them through a little processor that turn them into a powder I sprinkle it around as soon as I put that calcium around them, they started taking off. And recently, I just added JP Secret uh, fertilizer to everybody, see if it changed anything. And it's starting to actually, I'm starting to actually see certain growth on the tomatoes that weren't doing it. It could have been the right time, it could have been the fertilizer. 
What's great about having this 24 footer is that I could split it into two different styles, which also makes fun for experimenting. One side could be for basically the uh, eggshell powder and no fertilizer, and the other side could be JP's and see what happens. I like to experiment when it comes time and time. But anyway, guys, like, subscribe, share with your friends and family. Check out James Pigioni on the Gardening Channel as well, where I get a lot of my information from. And get out there outside and grow. And you know what? The best thing when you get outside and grow is you can grab a nice leaf like this one for my basil. Mmm. Just eat it. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you liked everything that you saw. I hope you guys got something from it. Definitely. We're going to have more videos to come to help everybody that's kind of getting lost and stuff. Anyway, guys, have a great afternoon. Peace.